Okay, uh, this is Introduction to Mechanical Engineering, um, the 2017 to 18 exam, uh, and we're looking at question 9 here, which is more material science. Um, we're given a stress strain curve uh, shown here. Um, first of all, we're asked for the tensile strength and elastic modulus of the alloy. Okay, well, uh, 9. A. The tensile strength, there are two strengths that are important. The tensile strength is the maximum stress which the metal can support, um, and so that is 500 megapascals. You can just read that straight off the graph. Um, there's also, of course, the yield strength, which is the limit of the elastic region, and the elastic region is this kind of straight section here. Um, that's what we're interested in when we want to find the elastic modulus. The elastic modulus, remember, um, I'll just put this in brackets here, elastic modulus E gives sigma equals E epsilon in the elastic region. So it's the same thing as Young's modulus in a different name. Um, so what we want to do is that means it's the relationship between stress and strain. Actually it's the slope of this straight line section here. Um, I'm going to pick the point at 300 megapascals, and if I just trace that down, um, I might even get a ruler and a pencil and just think about this quite carefully. Um, I think that ruler is about parallel now to the uh, vertical axis, and if I just trace down there... Um, I mean, you, you would have got the marks for being reasonably close on this, so you don't have to be absolutely perfect. But that looks to me like not a bad 0 0.006. So when the stress is 300 megapascals, the strain is 0 0.006 in the elastic region or at the limit of the elastic region. You could have picked a different point on the graph to get that, and we gave you some leeway here about exactly how precise you needed to be with the answer. But we know 300 times 10 to the 6 equals E times 0 0.006, which means that E equals... Sorry, that E is not very straight. A bit better. Uh, 300 times 10 to the 6 divided by 0 0.006, which is 5 times 10 to the 10, which equals 50 gigapascals. 50 times 10 to the 9 is 50 gigapascals. Um, okay, that's the answer to part A. There's two answers. 500 megapascals here and 50 gigapascals here. Uh, in part B, we're asked, we've got a bar of 60 square millimeters cross-sectional area. I'm just going to do one thing straight away. As soon as I see that 60 square millimeters equals 60 times 10 to the power of minus 6 square meters equals 6 times 10 to the minus 5 square meters. Um, it's important to note 1 millimeter is 10 to the minus 3 meters, so 1 square millimeter is 10 to the minus 3 squared meters squared, which is 10 to the minus 6 square meters. Um, I just wanted to make sure I had that number clear in my own head. Um, we've got a tensile load of P, a safety factor of 2, and the safety factor we're told is the tensile strength divided by the allowable stress. Rearranging that we can say allowable stress equals tensile strength divided by safety factor it 
which equals 500 MPa divided by 2, which equals 250 MPa. Uh, 250 megapascals is our target stress. And so um, we also know that stress is force divided by area, which in this case means that uh, the force, well, we're told the force is P, so I'll use P. P equals sigma A equals 250 times 10 to the 6, multi that's this number, mega, remember, gives me a prefix of 10 to the 6, multiplied by 6 times 10 to the minus 5, which is the area. 250E6 times 6E minus 5, and that gives me a force of 15,000 newtons, which equals 15 kilonewtons. And that is the maximum allowable load given that particular safety factor that we were asked about. And that's the answer there. Um, and now we can go on to part C. And in part C we're told um, max elongation equals 0.9 millimeters. Again, I'm just going to convert this straight into meters. That's 9 times 10 to the minus 4 meters. Sorry, that looks a bit like it says millimeters. That's meters. Um, and I guess the thing that I'm going to use next is the definition of strain. It's the change in length divided by the original length. And the length of the bar is kind of what we're asked for here. Um, so x equals delta x over epsilon. And then we also need to say sigma equals e epsilon. We need to, we don't know what the strain is, but it's the only thing that we can really use to find out this required original length of the bar x. Sigma equals e epsilon. Um, so epsilon equals sigma over e equals, and we're working to 250 megapascals divided by our Young's modulus, which we calculated is 50 times 10 to the 9. And that means we've got a strain of 5 times 10 to the minus 3. Remember, strain has no units here. Um, so x equals 9 times 10 to the minus 4 divided by 5 times 10 to the minus 3. I'm just using this equation here, which is the definition of strain rearranged, and I'm using these two numbers, the change in length that we're aiming for and the strain that we're aiming for to tell us what the original length must have been. And when I put that into my calculator, I get out 0.18 meters. So the original length of the bar, I can, it doesn't really matter how you want to express that. 0.18 meters is fine. Um, I'll just rewrite it as 180 millimeters. And that is the um, length of the bar that we're starting from. If you had a longer bar than that, then the elongation at 250 megapascals stress would be greater than 0.9 millimeters. And that's the answer to that question.